comes to mind when somebody says Cooperstown is baseball. I don't think there's any place like it in sports. The name Cooperstown, you know what you're talking about. You know what you mean. People who hit the ball better than anybody else, the people who pitch better than anyone else. This is the spiritual heart of the game. Let's play two. It's where legends come to live forever. It's the sports mecca. A small percentage of the best players that ever lived. The repository of not just all the history of the game, but I think our hopes. Said I'd be in the Hall of Fame one day, and I'm going in. Those are cool poppers. Wow. Yeah, that's neat. But look at how, how the old face masks are even done then, too. Oh, my Lord. As America has grown up, so has the Baseball Hall of Fame. Here's Connie Mack, and now he's in front of the microphone. The first induction ceremony on June 12, 1939, puts tingles up your spine. Not only did you have an induction of the all-time greats. Wow, well, this is a great day in my life. But you had the opening of the greatest sports history museum on Earth. Major League Baseball Productions presents A Hall for Heroes, the inaugural Hall of Fame induction of 1939. Picturesque, quaint, evocative. Any one of those words aptly describes Cooperstown, a place that has retained the charm of a bygone era. But this village has actually grown quite a bit since 1939. And among those lifelong residents who've witnessed that growth firsthand is Catherine Walker. It's a beautiful town. It was a small, sleepy town with uh, more cows than people. We have grown over the years, and it's a perfect place for a baseball hall of fame to be. Cooperstown is the genesis of two of our great iconic bits of Americana, the national pastime and cowboys and Indians. James Fenimore Cooper, the leather stocking tails, and baseball. For one glorious weekend each summer, Cooperstown is the epicenter of the baseball world. Hey! Fans and former players come here every year to pay homage to the greats of the game. There are just thousands and thousands and thousands of people that can't wait to go to Cooperstown to recognize their star players. Baseball is, of course, the draw but so too is the town itself. It's a wonderful place. It's a beautiful little town on a beautiful lake. When you look at a map of New York State and see where Cooperstown is, nestled between the Catskills and the Adirondacks, your mind wanders back to perhaps the 19th or even the late 18th century, and you imagine stickball games and baseball games and say, hey, this is a place the Hall of Fame should be. And as they have since 1939, Thousands of fans filled the streets once again in 2010 to witness that induction headlined by the Hawk. Andre Dawson compiled those Hall of Fame credentials during his 21 years in the major leagues. Look out. Folks, when this comes down, it might be in a different time zone. And prior to his induction, the Hawk, as is now custom, got a behind-the-scenes tour of his new home. You would like to see where your plaque's going to be? Sure. Okay. You, Harvey, and uh, Herzog will be the first one then starting that alcove. Okay. Okay, you, I think we should go downstairs and check out some of the archives. You want to go see your stuff down in the basement? Sure. All right. I can't wear that now. <laughs> What's it feel like, Andre? When I stepped into the plaque gallery, I kind of got goosebumps. Andre also reached out to touch a cherished piece of baseball's past. This is a jersey worn by Lou Gehrig in his final season in 39, and you can tell because of the patch, the baseball centennial patch. The 39 Gehrig jersey has a special significance in these halls, since 39 also marked the dedication of the Hall of Fame. In 1939, when players like Jimmy Fox were observing baseball's 100th anniversary, the first group was inducted. This was a glorious, glorious day in June 12, 1939. It was a singular and unforgettable event. But why Cooperstown? How did this sleepy little village come to be known as the place where baseball was invented in 1839 and eventually become a shrine to the game's greats? 
Well, it all began with a man who won more than 250 big league games, a sporting goods tycoon, and as it turns out, a creator of myths named Albert G. Spaulding. Every name stands for something. Few stand the test of time. It's gonna be 